Hey guys, Saul back here again with another video for Tasty Records. Um, this week we got a really good haul of jazz stuff, so I thought I'd um, show them off, you know, on, on the channel. Uh, as you know, I'm a big uh, jazz fan myself, I talk about it a lot uh, where I get the opportunity on the channel. And um, I got a really nice comment on my uh, last New Arrivals video saying how my enthusiasm for certain records is infectious, so perhaps you'll uh, get some more enthusiasm out of uh, this video right here. So I'll just kind of go through each record we got in and kind of talk about it a little bit um, and what it kind of, why you should kind of think about picking it up or listening to it on online before you pick it up. Um, we're an independent record shop here in uh, Altrincham, Greater Manchester. Got a website, got an in-store, as you can see. And uh, come and check us out, you know, if you haven't already. Um, but let's start. Uh, without further ado, as I say, let's begin. Uh, so the first one is one of many we're going to be looking at here on the, ch on the video. It's um, a Blue Note classic series and also a 1500 series, which I've been quite interested in uh, recently. It's Horace Silver's Six Pieces of Silver, uh, the Horace, Quin Horace Silver Quintet, and it's Blue Note 1539. So what do I mean by that? Um, <clears throat> basically, when Blue Note started doing LPs in the kind of mid 50s, they started a new catalog number, which was uh, Blue Note 15, and then whatever number it was, so 1501 going up to whenever. And then they, after that, into the 60s, I think it was, they started Blue Note 40, um, 40, and then the number. Um, and there's not that much difference between them, but the 1500 are older, and they're kind of part of that early Blue Note canon of, like, they were a very small independent label. Um, a lot of them have really classic covers, a lot of the classic uh, titles are on 1500 series. And um, I just love the vibe of these ones, you know. I love I love the the vibe of these uh, titles, and I've picked loads up out to show. And um, yeah, this is one of them. This is fifteen thirty nine, so the thirty ninth release. And um, this is a really nice record. It's one of my favourite Horace Silver records. A lot of his stuff, original pressings, are quite cheap. I think it's because he was quite popular uh, back in the day, uh, piano player. And um, yeah, it's a good a good album. This six piece of silver. Um, his other one, which is really big album, is uh, Songs to My Father, which is kind of like a Cuban, Afro-Cuban uh, style album. Really cool. This is on the Blue Note Classic series, so really nice mastering by Kevin Gray. Um, a really nice top release if you can't afford an original. In certain cases, I might put up the Discogs Median and Maximum and Lowest uh, on the screen just for fun, you know, to show you these ones are really affordable, which I'm showing you in the in the video, but they are very desirable pressings and very uh, hard to find, you know, if you if you are inclined that way. Uh, here's another 1500 series. This is Cool Strutting by Sonny Clark, another piano player. Um, loads of good swing in uh, Sonny Clark's playing. Uh, it's very natural playing as well. It's not as kind of experimental as someone we might talk about just in a moment. And uh, very kind of like not relaxing but kind of inventive but very laid back um, as you can see cool strutting but still got a hard bop um, edge to it this is 1588 so kind of coming to the end of the uh, 1500 series I'm pretty sure and um, yeah a classic title this one is very expensive to find an original first press of it as well uh, I do own this myself again it's um, on the classic series so really really worth picking up and a classic cover. That was, um, I think it was Francis Wolfe, the, the guy who owned Blue Note Records, that's his wife. Um, he took pictures of her in New York uh, with her legs, yeah. Um, this is Thelonious Monk, and this is Blue Note 1510, so a really early one. A lot of the earlier 1500 series, they were like archival things, so um, they were in like volume one and two because they were originally on 10 inch records, and uh, like Miles Davis did a few, Thelonious Monk. And uh, this is a great record. You've got all this kind of, this is like almost like a best of or him showing off his kind of uh, composition skills. Uh, Round About Midnight's on here, Off Minor, which is a really kind of cool, off kilter, weird track. Uh, Rudy My Dear, oh, Ruby My Dear. He plays that like all the time. Most of his records, he plays uh, that track on here and loads of others. Um, and again, this is the volume 
one of Genius of Modern Music. Uh, really in demand mono pressing. Again, Kevin Gray's done the remasters. Really great stuff and um, a classic and an essential if you're into jazz. Um, another one moving away from Blue Note, uh, just for a bit, we've got plenty more Blue Notes to come. This is A Love Supreme, uh, but live in Seattle, uh, John Coltrane. Uh, I'm pretty sure Ferris Sanders is playing on here, and um, this was a very fiery uh, set from Coltrane. Um, I love Supreme, it's still kind of spiritual pop jar, pop, post pop jazz, um, but this is kind of avant garde free, really out there, uh, really kind of metal machine music vibes you know, going on in this record. Uh, it was a lot more expensive when we first got it in, I seem to remember, uh, but it's come right down in price. This is $24.99 in the shop, really good price on this. And uh, it's a 2LP long form uh, performance and for the Coltrane fans this is like the ultimate, ultimatum, the ultimate uh, expression when it came to Coltrane. Uh, here's another really nice blue note we've got in. Uh, this is True Blue by Tina Brooks, or Tiny Brooks some people call him. Um, basically, Tina Brooks was um, a early saxophonist on the Blue Note label. This is part of the 1400, so this is 40, um, or not the 1400, the 40 series, so 4041, um, the catalogue number. So it's kind of like 1960-ish this came out. And um, yeah, this one is one I've been really eager to get hold of because, again, the original pressings are just insane on this. Um, I did show it in my uh, pickups video. We can't keep it in stock. It's a very, very high in-demand jazz title. Um, it's really, really good. Uh, I'd recommend it to anyone. Really kind of, I don't know, gospel-y, like a lot of gospel elements on here. But again, it's, you know, straight up uh, Blue Note uh, hard bop classic, you know. Really cool cover. A lot of people recognise the cover before they kind of know the music. Um, and yeah, again, super in-demand, super... Um, hard to find original pressing. Uh, here's another really cool one. This is Space Is The Place by Sun Ra. Um, free jazz album. Um, a lot more free than kind of, uh, I don't know, the more avant-garde stuff. Um, just kind of straight up free blowing and stuff like that. Um, but I think with Space Is The Place he was kind of uh, getting out something with space is the place out there but also space within is the place you know whoa man crazy out there concept <laughs> but um, this is another one which used to be a lot more expensive um, something like 40 quid when we first got it in but now it's right down to 24.99 really cool to see these price reductions and um, yeah available to see in the shop right now uh, here's one of my favourite uh, jazz albums ever, I'd say. I was going to say Blue Note, but I think it is one of my favourite jazz albums. Uh, Speak No Evil by Wayne Shorter. Um, this is just a great... Again, I've, I've talked about this a lot because I have um, an early original pressing of this myself. Uh, but this is kind of when, um, along with Tina Brooks, um, even though this came out in 66, so a lot later on in the Blue Note catalogue um, or the original kind of canon, um, this was like a very conceptual record. A lot of original Blue Notes are basically just them playing and kind of doing a session, doing a vibe, capturing that vibe and putting it on tape. This is a lot more of a kind of, not political, but kind of, yeah, societal, political statement uh, from Wayne Shorter, uh, maybe about the kind of um, um, McCarthyism with um, communism, you know, speak no evil and... Um, you know, like, um, he was a black guy in America and he married a Japanese woman who, you know, there was a lot of uh, contention around um, Japanese folk after the war in America. Got some great players on here, you know, um, a great band with Elvin Jones on drums, Herbie Hancock on piano, Freddie Hubbard on trumpet, just, and Ron Carter on bass, just stacked, you know, really cool uh, lineup and a lovely cover as well. And again, classic series release, really, really cool to see. Uh, this one is uh, John Coltrane Ballads, so Coltrane was around this time he was playing a lot more out there stuff but Impulse said can you do a bit more of a, a soft marketable record for us please and he uh, obliged but with his classic quintet of uh, Elvin Jones again, Jimmy Garrison and McCoy Tyner on piano and uh, this is just a super accessible record again really kind of cool jazz vibes, a lot of ballads on here as you can kind of tell by the title and um, yeah, a very thoughtful atmosphere. Nice record though, and a pretty good price on that one. 
Uh, we've got a really cool one. I'd love an original copy of this. This is Bird and Diz, um, Charlie Parker and um, Dizzy Gillespie. Uh, playing some classic bop uh, sides on this LP. And uh, some really cool, a really cool kind of weird, I don't know how you describe that. Maybe, I don't know, Cubist, I guess. Um, strange um, artwork on there. And it did originally come as a 10 inch, which I'd love to pick up. But this is the kind of uh, more affordable 12 inch. So if you just need a classic injection of uh, bop, this is the one for you. You know, really cool title. Of course, we had to get some of the standard um, reissues in, which we get in all the time. Kind of blue, up there with one of the best selling records in the shop and the best selling jazz album, the, the best selling jazz album of all time. Um, don't need to say much about it. I've done a video on it as part of Cool Jazz Christmas. Uh, watch that if you want more information on Miles Davis kind of blue um, as well as the kind of classic titles we've got some kind of more esoteric uh, contemporary titles this is a trombone shorty um, lifted and it's on the blue note um, label but it's a very much more contemporary title came out last year and um, yeah loads of kind of I don't know New Orleans style on here but kind of mixing it with a modern kind of fusiony uh, sensibility so a lot of gospel on here um, a lot of funky elements and stuff like that and a really really good price in this so uh, pick it up if you want uh, another kind of more left field project more contemporary one this is Donald Bird uh, Places and Spaces a really kind of classic title really one everyone loves in the shop and uh, this is kind of straight up kind of funky disco uh, jazz uh, Donald Bird was like part of the kind of old guard of uh, bot players in the 50s and he's done some really good records uh, starting off with kind of cool jazz early on and then getting into um, the more kind of experimental funky stuff. Um, he did a new perspective which had like vocals on it which was a very strange concept for uh, jazz at the time as in not just straight vocal jazz but backing vocals and uh, this is a really lovely um, summery uh, feeling album and it's a great title. I'd highly recommend it. Look at all those uh, squares in there. And great selling title as well. And it's really good that, you know, Kevin Gray on the Classic Series is doing a lot of these kind of later titles, which didn't get as much love back in the day and um, are having a bit of a resurgence. I think original pressings of this are, you know, 50 to 100 pounds-ish. So it's good to get a, uh, a reissue there. Um, we've got another kind of classic title, which is really in demand, um, Herbie Hancock's Maiden Voyage. Uh, this is kind of another kind of light concept album I'd say just kind of talking about the sea and um, how it's bigger than man and stuff like that you know um, it's really cool cover on there as well that kind of like sailing boat and if you do really feel the vibe on here like you know if you really kind of have that in your mind while you're listening to it about the sea it can conjure some really cool images of kind of you know again how uh, merciless the sea is and stuff like that and how um, only the brave venture off in there. Uh, Survival of the Fittest, uh, one of the tracks on here. Um, Dolphin Dance is on here as well, which kind of became a jazz standard. And Maiden Voyage did as well, just because of how kind of big and popular this record is. I'd love to get an original of this, um, but I'm tempted to take this one home because I've not actually got it. And um, it's one of my favourites to listen to. Again, it's got some really good players on here. You know, Ron Carr again on bass, Freddie Hubbard on trumpet, um, Anthony Williams on drums. A really cool title, highly recommend it. Here's another really classic title, it's only just been reissued, um, Mosaic by Art Blakey. Uh, we've got, and the Jazz Messengers of course. Um, just stellar lineup again, you've got Wayne Shaw on here from before, Curtis Fuller on trombone and uh, Freddie Hubbard again on trumpet. I mention all these names a lot but when you really get into their playing and even though they are very, very popular within you know, Blue Note and jazz and stuff like that, they are just such a, a lovely listen. When, you, when you're like, you know, you hear Freddie Hubbard on trumpet, it's just unmistakable. He's just really kind of, I don't know, it's just difficult to describe, just a great kind of expressor on the trumpet. And um, great to see them all on here, you know. Uh, this is a kind of another classic title, uh, 1490, so kind of an early 40 series title. And um, yeah, when Blue Note were really in their swing, you know, and Art Blakey was selling a lot of records for them and as the kind of forefront of the hard bop sound. Uh, here's another one I'm really excited to have back in and it's a really good seller in the shop as well, across the board uh, with many fans. 
of many genres picking this up. This is The Awakening by Ahmed Jamal. Um, I always say this every time I lift it up. Um, the World Is Yours by Nas kind of sampled this. And this was a very, very hard to find record until it was just reissued by uh, Third Man on the Verve label, Verve by request, because everyone wanted it. And um, yeah, just a stellar piano performance by the trio on here. I love this record so much, I listen to it all the time. Again, it's very chill because it's only a piano trio, um, but there's a lot of kind of very inventive stuff on here. And again, I always say about the awakening, like he's like an epiphany, he's going up there, it's crazy. But yeah, give this a listen, really happy to have it back in stock and um, one which won't hang around long, I'm sure. Here's another stranger one um, from the Blue Note series. This is kind of, uh, this is Jackie McLean, Destination Out. Um, Jackie McLean is, I generally don't buy a lot of his stuff because it's very kind of post boppy almost avant-garde. A lot of his stuff is very kind of screechy. And um, I don't know, a lot of his sessions, so I'm thinking like Freedom, free, Let Freedom Sing or Let Freedom Ring or something like that. Uh, that's a very kind of uh, hard to listen to record. Um, and I, I guess it's a classic really, but it's got like Eric Dolphy and I think John Coltrane plays on there actually. Um, but yeah, really cool title. Um, but this one is, again, it's got an experimental sensibility. He's going for a very spacey atmosphere. He's got like vibes on here, vibraphone, um, Bobby Hutchison, uh, Granchen Moncor the third as John Trompone, which was a very experimental artist um, in the Blue Note series. And um, yeah, this is a very spacey, again, I think of the kind of space race and stuff like that. There's another record coming up, which um, I'm going to talk about that as well. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd highly recommend it, you know, just because it's a very unusual uh, jazz album. And it isn't too screechy, this one is, and it's, it's definitely very hard boppy, even though it's, I'd say it's post bop, like the more kind of later stuff, you know. Here's another really classic um, Art Blakey record. This is Moaning. Um, probably one of the better selling records of all time as well, one of the better selling jazz albums. And um, an unmissable classic series, Blue Note, classic uh, by the full meaning of the title. Um, just that t that cover can get a lot of people to listen to it just because it's so kind of striking. Um, unfortunately though, this is a reissue cover because it was originally called Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers and the text was along here. Um, but after the success of the title track Monin, uh, written by Bobby uh, Timmons, the piano player, they kind of remarketed this as it's called Monin, it's got Monin on it, buy it. Um, but they've used that cover, which isn't too bad. But I think I do own this copy and I'd rather have the original artwork, it's a little bit more striking. I have seen original copies of it for like 170 quid in some shops, and I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna pay that. But um, yeah, good one to look out for, good one to pick up if you've not got it already. Um, next one on here, this is Think by Lonnie Smith. Um, this is a lot more of a funky album, but it's definitely still got a jazz sensibility. Um, it's from the kind of later 60s, I'm pretty sure, like 67, um, I think it came out. And um, yeah, it's got like Aretha Franklin on here, um, as in other any Aretha Franklin track, not actually her on here. Um, but the Think, the Think, the title track is really, really cool. Um, it's very kind of, again, accessible, um, it's very funky, so you can kind of get away with playing it at some funk nights and stuff like that. And um, yeah, it was, again, it's part of the later series of Blue Note, so this is 4290, so 200 titles later since the start of the 4000, uh, the 40 series. And um, yeah, again, classic series. I think they're quite hard to find the originals, so uh, make sure you grab this one if you don't have it already. Uh, we've got Art Blakey meets the Rhythm section, again one I've talked about a lot on this channel and I did a whole Cool Jazz Christmas on it as well and um, what else do you have to say, just pick it up already if you don't have it already, this is the Kraft stereo version as well so really nice title to have. Um, we've got Watermelon Man uh, by Mongo Santa Maria, uh, he had a massive hit, Watermelon Man written by Herbie Hancock and when this one came out, I think it went to number one in America or something. A very Latin world music, groovy inspired version. I do really like it. Um, it's different to the Herbie Hancock version, but it's still very jazzy. 
um, and I love the vocals on there and stuff like that. It's a very kind of upbeat version. It kind of suits the track very much or very well. And um, the rest of the albums on here as well. There's loads of good tracks on here. Um, one, again, I'm very tempted to pick up because it's a little bit different, you know, a little bit different. A really good price on that as well, 19.99. Uh, we're getting into some of the more hard to find ones as well. I should have really started with these, but, you know, as the way things go, uh, some more hard to find titles uh, we've been uh, taking, put into the shop. Uh, this is Kenny Dorham. Uh, this is part of the 1500. Oh, no, it's not. It's the 40, 4063, excuse me. Uh, but this is a very uh, cheap, a very affordable reissue of this classic title. Very hard to find Kenny Dorham stuff. Um, I think his album Quiet Kenny is like the heart, like the rarest or the most expensive album on its um, new jazz label, which was on. Uh, but this is a very excess again very easy to find um, well saying that it's not easy to find this reissue but it's uh, cheap when you do find it such as in um, Tasty Records and it's part of the kind of uh, for forbidden range uh, grey label pressings I have a couple of these at home I've taken I'll, you know all disclosure full disclosure I'll talk about which ones I took home and uh, they sound great they're really good pressings and um, yeah, Hank Mobley's on here, Kenny Drew, um, Philly Joan Jones on drums, just a really good um, backing for Kenny Dorham on trumpet. <laughs> uh, yeah, highly recommend it. We've got another standard reissue, Chet Baker Sings, again I don't need to talk about it in length because I already have a million times on this channel. Uh, we've got Hank Mobley, this is one I took home. This is an insanely expensive record to find, this is Hank Mobley Quintet and um, Originals are just silly expensive and I saw some people on Instagram kind of showing their, their original pressings off um, But this hasn't been officially reissued. I'm pretty sure in the last like, you know, few decades I don't think it has maybe in Japan and stuff like that But to have a brand new reissue for this kind of price. It's well worth it So give it a listen if you if you're a fan of Hank Mobley and um, think about picking this quintet album up because it's a very good all-rounded record you know that's what i was thinking when i was listening to it just a really cool all-rounded hang mobile record really cool uh here's why i didn't pick up but i was very very tempted to this is peck in time hank mobley and lee morgan so lee morgan on trumpet um this is again 1574 i think this is this is the earliest blue note record i own now 1550 um so pretty early and this is 1574. Hank Mobley was riding high, so was Lee Morgan. And this is a really cool session with the kind of tape box on the on the cover there. Um, Speak Low is a really good track on here. I really like that one. And um, yeah, just a great kind of lineup again. Everyone's playing their best, and um, it's a really hard to find record to find. So pick it up if you can. Uh, here's Stylings of Silver, uh, another Horace Silver record. Uh, this has got a really good um, lineup. Again, you've got Art Farmer on trumpet. He's kind of really underrated uh, trumpet player, I think, from this period. And here he is in what I can assume is the United Nations building um, in New York. A uh, really cool kind of picture. Very unusual for the, the Blue Note um, in this era. A lot of them were very colourful graphics and stuff like that, but a very kind of standard concrete grey uh, cover. So the next one is another one I'm really excited to pick up and uh, it's Workout by Hank Mobley again. Um, some really good players again on here. We've got uh, Grant Green on guitar which really makes this session. Loads of good guitar solos on here. Um, and very kind of sounds like a saxophone almost, you know, his style of playing. It's not like he's proper shredding. Um, but I love, love, love this cover. And I'll show you my cover just because this covers a lot of the best elements of it. It's Hank Mobley here, just chilling out after his workout, and um, he's got his saxophone there on the table, or on the chair even, he's got his cool sunglasses there, and his little coke bottle there, and he's having a little smoke. Um, but yeah, it's one of them old kind of coke bottles as well, the proper like wide ones from the 60s, and just, I just love this cover, you know, it's so candid, but almost feels like it might have been, you know, placed just to make him look super cool. Uh, but yeah, another really cool cover, another really hard to find one in out of press it is. And um, I love an original of this just because the cover would be so clean and clear and stuff like that. Uh, next one is a really good Hank Mobley one. 
Uh, another Hank Mabley one, which I took home myself. This is Roll Call. Uh, Roll Call because it's got so many good players again on here. Um, Art Blakey on drums, proper smashing on here. And this is a lot of people's favourite jazz album, I'd say, um, ever. You know, a lot of people talk about this online being one of their favourites. Um, again, really hard to find a close original of this. And um, I just, I'm blown away when I hear it. You know, it is a proper focused effort. Um, it does sound really, really good. And um, a really good pressing as well. Really cheap, affordable, uh, good pressing. Rat Pack Records, they're called these. So um, if you see them around or in the shop, you know, buy with confidence because they are really, really good. Um, here's another one Dorothy Ashby and Frank Wess. Uh, Dorothy Ashby's a jazz harpist. And uh, we've had her, her records in when it got reissued for the um, uh, Verve by Request series. And this is a, another one on new jazz um, originally. And again, a very hard to find record. She's playing some um, some standards on here, so you'd be so nice to come home to, stuff like that. Um, and they are very, very good. Um, again, very unusual and um, from the early 60s, so it's not super out there, uh, but it's, it's a very good record and very, very hard to find. Um, here's some more kind of standard stuff we uh, get in all the time, but I'll kind of fly through these just at the end of the video. Uh, this is um, Brilliant Corners, very experimental record from Thelonious Monk. Again, it's on doll, but it's a very, very good sound impressing and um, very affordable. We've got Mingus Arum. I've got a first UK press of this, and I've done a brag, but let you know. <laughs> uh, again, another really cool cover. Uh, nice painting on there. The doll label, but again, really good selling record in the shop, and uh, glad to have it back in. We've got Birth of the Cool. I found a very cheap uh, original pressing and brought it back to life. If you've not seen that video, check it out on the channel. But this is kind of um, a really cool Birth of the Cool uh, record and I um, highly recommend it. We've got Midnight Blue by Kenny Burrell, another really great uh, jazz guitarist. And um, this is a seminal album of his. Uh, everyone loves this. It's got a few foodie kind of things. It's got wavy gravy on here, chili con carne, <laughs> some foodie uh, named titles. Pretty cool. Uh, we've got Duke Ellington, John Coltrane. The, this is, the only reason to buy this record is for uh, In A Sentimental Mood. Excellent cut on this record. Really, really enjoy it. Very relaxed, very great coll collaboration between uh, two greats. Um, we've got Moonbeams, Bill Devon's trio, featuring um, Chuck Israels on bass, not Scott LaFaro, and, um, weirdly, and Nico on the cover there, um, strangely enough. But yeah, really cool uh, copy. We've got Chat Chat. I did this one as part of the Cool Jazz Christmas and we sold loads as a result. A really good record. And finally, we've got Waltz for Debbie, um, another really good sounding record. Highly recommend this. Recommend this. And um, yeah, just a great record again. I think I did. I did Sunday the Village Vanguard, but it's from the same session. Um, but yeah, there's a little uh, show. I mainly wanted to show uh, the Rat Pack records, these kind of stuff, because we've never had them in the shop before and I really, I picked up four of them myself and uh, they're the kind of thing I uh, really like to collect and I'm really happy to have in my hand and in the shop. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to uh, shoot us a like and subscribe, a comment on anything you've seen here. If you think these are crap pressings, just let me know in the comments and I'll never talk about them again. No, I will. But um, yeah, thanks very much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.